This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. I had never heard of insulinoma before I was diagnosed with it. As diseases go, this wasn't one of the famous ones that cause people to cluck their tongues, grimace, or shake their heads in sympathy. When I told people I had insulinoma, they looked at me like they didn't know what I was talking about, which they didn't. But have it, I did. And that's what led me to the University of Michigan Medical Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan, in April of 2006. It all started in 2003, three years before my diagnosis with this strange illness. Ruth and I were in Florida for a few months, basking in the sun and trying to beat each other at golf. At the time, I could still beat her, but barely. It was there I had my first episode. Apparently, I have no memory of this. One night, we were sitting around the condo, and suddenly I just zoned out. According to Ruth, I just stared into space for an hour, not knowing who she was, completely disoriented and confused, and a little bit agitated. One bonus of having a nurse for a wife is that she can often tell what's wrong with me, or at least she knows what to do to help the situation. She thought it seemed like a case of low blood sugar, and she shoved a bit of chocolate in my mouth to get my blood sugar evened out. Ruth told me I couldn't even shut my own mouth to chew it. That's how out to lunch I was. She shut my mouth for me, something she probably wishes she could have done a long time ago. Ruth took me to the ER for tests the next day, and they couldn't find anything wrong. For the next three years, I was fine. No more episodes to speak of. Since I hadn't even remembered what happened, I didn't think much about it. Ruth, though, being a nurse and my wife both, tucked it away in the back of her mind, wondering if it would ever happen again and why it happened in the first place. We were vacationing up north in Boyne Mountain, Michigan, with two of our grandchildren, when I had another spell. It was the same kind of thing as in Florida. I woke up sometime in the night, dazed and incoherent, and I had no idea who Ruth was or where I was. When Ruth woke up, she saw that I had pulled my legs up in the fetal position, and I was staring at her without really seeing her. I moaned and moaned, but didn't appear to have any pain. Ruth got me up to go to the bathroom, and she had to hold me up the whole way because I was so shaky. She made me eat some more chocolate, but somehow kept me quiet. Our granddaughter was sleeping in the same hotel room, and she didn't want to scare her. The next morning I felt perfectly fine once again and had no memory of anything happening the night before. We took the kids to the water park, went out for lunch, and drove home to Grand Rapids where it happened again. I had fallen asleep on the couch, and when I woke up, once more I didn't know where I was or who Ruth was. According to Ruth, I was acting anxious and a bit crazy, my heart racing and my limbs shaking. I was moaning again and repeatedly beating the couch cushions. This time she was freaking out too on the inside. I began crawling around on the floor, trying to get out of the condo, trying to get away from poor Ruth. She was grabbing me by the belt, attempting to physically slow me down so I couldn't get out. She finally managed to lock the doors and dial 911. Nurse or no nurse, my wife was definitely alarmed but her training helped her stay calm and take command of the situation. "'What's he doing?' the 911 dispatcher asked her. "'He's crawling around on the floor, and he has no idea who I am.' The ambulance got there about five minutes later, loaded me up, and took me to Spectrum Health Hospital in downtown Grand Rapids. I was at Spectrum for ten days, where I was poked and prodded within an inch of my life. Finally, they diagnosed me with insulinoma, a rare tumor of the pancreas that shows itself as being the exact opposite of diabetes. My pancreas was generating so much insulin, it was eating all the sugar in my body, hence the strange spells. I had a blood sugar level of 31, which is apparently very bad news. I had the dubious honor of being the first case of insulinoma they had ever diagnosed at this hospital 
one of the top hospitals in the United States. Literally, less than one in one million people are diagnosed with it each year.